Hi and welcome to my channel. I am Betty and today I'll be reviewing the Rivendell Lord of the Rings. If you are a fan of building Lego and you want to see more, please subscribe to this channel and I'll be updating you regularly. So today I'll be reviewing the Rivendell set. Um, yes, it is a huge set. If you haven't seen my unboxing video, I would suggest you do that first, but just look at this. It's finished, but I cannot take my eyes off it. I really can't. <laughs> so first off, as you might see, uh, it looks like one big set, but it's actually three parts, which you can easily take apart like this. It also comes with three separate building manuals for each set. So you've got the tower here, which is extraordinary. I will show you in a bit. You've got the midsection, which is basically the center of Rivendell with the great hallways, but also the table of Elrond. And then you have here the waterfall and the garden, the armory. And it's just, these three pieces are so unique. This isn't the first Lord of the Rings Lego set that they've built, that they've made. Um, it is the biggest Lego set inspired by Lord of the Rings. 6,167 bricks. That is a lot. That's also why it's not a set suitable for children. So there are 50 bags of Lego bricks. And you can see here with the pictures which bag comes belongs to what piece. So if you're meaning to start with one particular piece of this set, you just look for the right bags and you start building. I also love the fact that this set does not contain a lot of stickers. This is it. Just two tiny sheets, 13 stickers, that's it, for the entire Rivendell set. The figurines are one of the things that really make Lego sets worthwhile. So, as you can see on the top of the box, there are 15 figures that come with this set, and you know them all. If you've seen the movies, if you've read the box, you will recognize them straight away. start with this one first. So this is the tower. So what is also very funny is that with each of these three large pieces there is a, an item you can remove. So for example here you can remove the tower which also allows you to get inside here and play around. And now you can immediately see why this is an 18 year old plus uh, kind of Lego artwork because there are some building techniques in here. I've never seen that with any other set. They are so complex, they are so layered um, and it's just incredible. I mean there's a whole team behind this set, I think about seven or eight people who developed the set and you can really see that everyone has put their minds together to make incredible art building structures. Um, I've seen parts being reused that I know from other uh, Lego sets in a way that I never would have guessed or dreamed being reused as a new purpose in this set. It is unbelievable, unbelievable. So there's a little entrance. You've got these five statues on the tower. All these little ferns and greens, there's like even a little secret entrance here. <laughs> um, what I completely love is the fact that when you put in, uh, for, for example, these ferns, so you put them in on the ground first and then you start building and then the Lego bricks, they all come over the plants so they don't fall off your set once it's built. I think that's quite ingenious. And then look at all these arches. Isn't that beautiful? This is actually the, the, the bottom of a brick, but it suits so perfectly here. So I want to show you what's inside. And over here we have a, a painting of Isildur, who was trying to cut off Sauron's finger. But in here is where the real magic happens. So down here you can see there's like a little day bed, book, there's bookshelves, candles so this is a nice place to relax and then up here is the bedroom where 
Frodo wakes up the first time in Rivendell. And what I love about this is that the bed, for example, it is, it is made so closely to match the one in the movies. So you'd see this headboard with the elf carved out. Over here is like a little desk and seat. And that is the place where Bilbo can work, is working on his book. There and back again. So this is the second part of the set. It's kind of the, it's the waterfall, the garden and the armory. It also has two large trees here. And this is just one of those pieces that contains a lot of layer building. So, so sometimes I would just be building something and I would have no clue what it was. And then you'd have to turn it sideways and then you're like, ah, that's what it is. <laughs> Just have a look at this detail. So look at this bridge, how nicely it's been constructed. There's a waterfall back here. It is amazing. I've never seen a Lego waterfall like this. It is just, it is incredible. It just looks so real. And then again, all the ferns being um, strapped underneath other bricks to make sure they don't fall off. It's incredible. And I mean, just look at this, what it, yeah, canopy, I, th I, don't, I don't have any other word for it. It's like a canopy, but it's the one you can see in a lot of gardens. Not only do you see these leafy vine-like shaped things, I also see, I recognize these. These are basilisk teeth from my Harry Potter set. <laughs> Uh, dinosaur bones from another set that I saw but it's just it's incredible how it's been put together in a way to make something completely different so over here you have the waterfall you have this then there's a piece of garden here I love these trees I love the different colors the different shapes there's different kind of trees in this set which is absolutely beautiful even this, I mean, just coming down these stairs, these are all different layers that I had to build piece by piece. And while I was building them, I had no clue what I was building until I stacked them on top of each other. And I'm like, they're stairs. So incredibly thought of. Look at this little detail here, the mushrooms. And actually this white base, it's a glow in the dark. And then we turn the set around and you can see here, this is the armory. So there's like a little fireplace here. This is where the elves make their weaponry. You know they are famous for making their elfish swords. There's an entrance over there. But as you turn it around a bit more, underneath here, at the back of the waterfall actually, there's more mushrooms, even a frog. And in here is the armory. Now let me bring some light on there because this thing, it actually comes off. So we do it like that. And then I can show you the inside of the weaponry because we'll have a bit more light. So here's a nice place where they sharpen the tools. There's some elvish swords in the back, an axe, a bow and arrows, and a great way to use the space underneath the canopy. And then you can just put it right back if you want that. There you go. Also, this is one of my favorite places of Rivendell because you see that day bed over there? This is the place where lovely Arwen comes to read her book and where Aragorn goes to see his love. This piece is so incredibly detailed, so incredibly beautiful. And again, it's just, it's a construction of so many different building techniques. I really loved putting this piece together. And then we have the centerpiece, which was also quite the endeavor, one might say. The centerpiece is the biggest part of the Rivendell set. It also has a small tower over there, as you can see. There's a huge tree which flows over 
the round council of Elrond. And the funny thing is, I mean, if you look closely, you will see, this is so fun, you will see like hot dogs that I recognize from different sets that are basically used to make the seats for the council. The, the big seat for Elrond. And again, here also a lot of ferns, greens, safely secured within the tiling. This, this brick layering, it is so incredible. You've got the huge roof entrance here. There's some lemon bread on the table. It has such a detail. And you turn it around, there's like a huge, huge tree. Magnificently built, completely different than all the other trees in the sets. And then here is a little sapling. And then you turn it around a little bit more. And there's a nice little bench you can sit and just, you know, enjoy the views. And in the back here, there's a lot going on in the back as well. So you've got all these nice little tables and chairs with, with maps. And I mean, look at that floor, look at those tiles. I immediately recognize them from the movies. It's just incredible how many tiles Lego has designed just for this set because it's identical to the floors of Elrond's house. So that that is where you go up the stairs towards the council. And here is also another staircase. You can go up. There's uh, some equipment to do some stargazing, I think. There's this, it's a has like a lens and a sextant on it. And over here, the stairs go even further. And then you come up here. So I also love the fact that not just the roof, you have this little tower here, but also you have this, it's, it's decoration, it's there for de decoration purposes, but it really enhances this building. Some more paintings over here. As you can see, here's the statue and the table that holds the sword Narsil. It is so incredibly pretty. And even here, when you turn it around a little bit more, just want to show you the whole piece. Isn't that great? So two more things I want to show you. First of all, that roof. Come on, people. Look at that roof. Isn't that incredible? Look at the coloring, the pattern. I'm going to be honest, it was a beep to putting that roof together because there are so tiny parts that you just have to press, 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 press. I mean, that were a lot of tiles. So Lego has come up with a very clever way to do the tiling in a way that it kind of outlines perfectly. So you just use this bit here, you take it together, you put it between the tiles, it doesn't matter how you've put them out, and you just slide back and forth like this and immediately it straightens out all the tiles right in front of you. But the results are incredible. And then another thing I want to show you, like the other pieces also had a part that you can take out. It's the same here. You can take out the big tree with the council and just place it in front. And look at this. There's a little Easter egg in here. That's the eye of Sauron. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Hidden right underneath that table. Taking it out, it's, it's a bit easier to play around with this set. Give everybody a seat at the table. So I'm not sure if I'm putting everybody in the right order, but here we go. Then of course we need to take the ring from Frodo's hand and put it there you go. The Council of Elrond is complete. So now let me tell you something about the figures or figurines, the characters that you get with this set. And it's, it's just small attention to detail. It's, it goes a long way. So with this set, you get 15 characters. Well, actually 21 if you incorporate the five statues here 
at the base of the tower and the statue with Narsil. So what you get is you get a set of elves, five elves. So you get Elrond, Arwen, Legolas and two elves who are just happening to be on Rivendell too. You get five hobbits, you get Bilbo, Sam and Frodo, Merry and Pippin. You get two dwarves, so you've got Gimli and you've got his father Gloin, who was also attending the Council of Elrond. And then over here you have Aragorn, Gandalf the Wizard and Boromir. And what I find so nice about these characters, they look very much alive. I mean, look at Boromir, look at that face, look at the detail. That is just Boromir. I don't know what else to say. And it's incredible. So he got, he's got his shield, he's got his sword. The outfit is spot on. Same goes for Gandalf. So he's got his pointy hat, his walking cane or magic wand, as you might say. Look at the face of, of Merry and Pippin. They are so close to the real characters from the movie. Sam with a frown upon his face. Uh, Elrond and sweet, sweet Arwen. Just look at them. She even has the evening star around her neck. Isn't that beautiful? Legolas with his complete outfit. This is incredible. Some characters come with capes, so particularly the hobbits. And what I also notice is that there is a, a difference in height for the characters. So the elves and the humans are the tallest. The Hobbits are the smallest actually and then there's the the dwarves They are kind of in between the hobbits and the humans So they've really taken into account that the characters in the movies and in the books They have different sizes and heights and they've really incorporated that as well in their figures um, And almost each and every character has their own special thing or weapon like Legolas has his bow and arrow, Arwen has a nice book, Bilbo has his walking cane, Sam with his frying pan, unbelievable, Frodo has his ring and also uh, his sword sting. Then Merry and Pippin obviously, you know, they gotta have something to eat with them all the time from a carrot to some Lembus bread. Uh, where would Gimli be without his two uh, Boromir with his shield? It's unbelievable and it's not just that, most of the characters also have a jewel face. So this is Frodo but you can turn his head around and you will get... Frodo going into a sort of a trance. Even Bilbo has like this face where he gets mad because Frodo won't give him the ring. Almost. <laughs> Gloin doesn't have a back, but that's fine. But most of them do have a jewel, jewel face. What I also find very handy is, for example, if you take Gandalf, you can take off his pointy hat and you can actually replace it with long hair. But this here, as you can see, his, his robe, it's not very convenient for sitting down on the chairs when he's attending the council. So what you can do is you can take these off and then you get, get this extra piece with Gandalf's robe in front, but it has like a little corner cut out and it will enable him to sit down on a chair when he's attending the council. And the same goes for Elrond, but also for our dear hobbits. Even these little tiny feet can be taken out and replaced with these. And it will enable Frodo to just sit down. And the same goes for Bilbo. I mean, just look at the two of them. <laughs> but I mean, just look at them. Isn't this a great bunch to have together in one Lego set, enjoying themselves, living out the best life in Rivendell. I just think it's an amazing thing Lego has pulled off with this set. The amount of detail that has gone into this set is just incredible. So let's give a big applause to this special group of people that have enabled us to start building Rivendell as a Lego set. So do I think this set is worth its value? Say yes, without a doubt. The fact that it has so many unique settings, unique places to peek, Easter eggs, um, the attention to detail that has gone into this piece, it's just 
incredible. It's incredible. The fact that you can just take them apart into three, into three units, which makes it easier to transport them or move them around, put them in a, on a different sh shelf or place. I also love the fact that you can take these out and just play with it separately. It actually gives you six pieces to play with. I just don't have any other word other than this set just being incredible. I have not read the books, but this set really takes me back to the movies. It allows me to do role playing. It allows me to teach my kids something about dwarves, elves, hobbits. <laughs> this is, it's just so pretty to look at. It's so pretty to, to make. It really challenged me as a, as a brick fanatic to build something differently with my hands. The amount of, of detail, the, the, the layering of the bricks, everything just taken together it is an amazing set yes i would spend another 500 bucks on a, on a set like this yeah speechless <laughs> this set costs about 500 bucks 6167 bricks it was the four best days that i spent a total dedication to lego uh, which also meant a lot of peace and quiet in my head so if you want to see more of these Lego videos, please subscribe to the channel below and I will be back with you with more Lego and brick fun. Thank you for watching. Bye.